I'm not 100% certain, so I'm gonna ask, are you all surveyors? Yeah. All surveyors? Okay, any insurance adjusters? You're an insurance adjuster as well? Good, okay, okay. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna pass two of these around. This is standard Isinglass, and this is what's becoming more common, the acrylic. Um, there's a big name out there called Easy 2 cy Familiar with that name? Well, Easy 2 cy is a, is a name, it's not a product. That's a, it's a company's name. Um, the acrylic is just an 80 mil standard acrylic. Um, there's a lot of people that are using it now. We call ours Catco Clear, the name of our business. Um, yes, sir. Rick was in front of the camera to me today. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Sorry, I should have said. Um, let me, actually, let me start right here. Let me pass it. Um, the 80 mil acrylic is, is typically got like a 70% uh, UV rating. It's got some shatter resistance to it, some break resistance to it. Um, there's a lot of different products out there. Um, but the, the standard method for installing the acrylic onto canvas is to glue it. It's not sewn. If you, if you notice on there, there's a, uh, there's a stitch line. It looks like it's stitched through the, the, the clear itself, but it's not. That's just a fake stitch line, and all that does is just give it some aesthetics. Holds the panel together so that it looks like it's you know, put together or stitched on there. Um, but basically, it's just glued. Um, there are very few people out there that are able to either produce that or reproduce a new piece of clear in there because they just don't have the knowledge on how to do it, <clears throat> how to debond it and how to rebond it on there. Um, but as a surveyor, one of the things that I want you guys to take notice of is the finish on those things. Those things look like the, the green one there, you would not be able to tell if it was the inside or the outside. It means that the fabric is completely encasing the clear on there. That is the best way to give longevity to canvas. Um, you'll see that, that there's a lot of manufacturers out there that have a canvas spacing or just a canvas border around the outside of it. You get a lot of dirt and, and crud and stuff that goes inside there, will deteriorate canvas a lot faster. So this will, uh, if it's built properly, will last a lot longer. Um, <clears throat> I also have here, starting with that, this is, this is our, these are some um, care and maintenance forms from Sunbrella themselves. You can take as many of those as you'd like to have if you need any of them. <laughs> Um, Sunbrella has, well, first of all, Sunbrella is probably one of the most commonly used fabrics on marine applications. Um, it's the biggest name out there. There's a lot of different ones. I can, look through these, there's, <coughs> Stratix glass is just another manufacturer. Stratix, okay, let's let's talk about materials first, and then we'll talk about glasses. All right. Um, <clears throat> there's there's Coast Guard, there's Argonaut, there's Sunbrella, there's um, Tempo Test, and a whole bunch of other names that I've said. They're all solution dyed acrylics, which means that once the fabric is woven, then it's dipped. Right, it's dipped into the color, so that the color is also um, acrylic. And that's what gives it the lifetime, is that being that it's a solution dyed acrylic fabric. Um, it's breathable, which means it's not waterproof. And when it's not waterproof, that's, you know, creates leaking. But what it does do is it gives it breathability, unlike a vinyl. 
in those in that chart that I'm sending around, there's also a, a vinyl um, breakwater. So there's different applications for the different materials. But <clears throat> with uh, the breathability, what you do is you reduce the mildew and the mold and the, and the crud buildup inside any type of boat or any type of cover because it's breathing. Um, if you have a standard vinyl and you cover a boat with a standard vinyl and it doesn't have vents in it, even if it does have vents in it, you still build up con uh, condensation inside. It. And the condensation along with dirt creates mold and mildew. So what you're trying to do is eliminate the mold and mildew by having a breathable fabric. And that's what makes Sunbrella so popular, is that they have, it, it breathes. Um, in order to uh, conquer the waterproofing problem, um, all, most all of the manufacturers have developed a uh, underneath coating that they put on there. Um, Seamark is one name. What, what it is is they took, Sunbrella took their fabric, which is a nine and a quarter ounce marine grade fabric, and gave it to Seamark. And Seamark comes in and they put a coating on the bottom side of it. It's kind of a plastic coating. If you guys have been around boats, you know, most of you have seen it. Mostly it's on bimini tops. It's almost like a vinyl on the bottom side of it. Um, well, they're, it's a good product, but what's happening over time is that stuff will crack and it will also create a little bit of mold and mildew on it as well. So today, within the past 10 years, I would say, they've come up with uh, Sunbrella Supreme, Sunbrella Plus, um, you know, which has got like different flockings and stuff underneath it to try to keep it from being um, as not waterproof. So it's more waterproof. Um, <clears throat> now on a, on, a lot of the bigger boats, like the sport fish boats, these guys are going more towards um, a vinyl fabric, which is, you know, like the breakwater or the stamwood. It's just a white, typically, or a cream um, vinyl. Now, the vinyl will actually outlast the Sunbrella in a way if it's not handled so much. And a lot of bigger flybridge boats aren't handled, you know, mostly they're just picked up or put back down, zip, so they're not taken on and off and wadded up and stored underneath seats and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> should have got some water, I'm already parched. So, <clears throat> um, any questions about the different types of materials? I mean, there's so many different names. In our shop, we primarily use Coast Guard or Sunbrow. And there, it's just simply a solution dyed acrylic. And if that's all that you ever know, that's all you need to know, is that that's, that's the type of material that you want to put on a boat. Because anything else that has any type of cotton or polyester or anything in there, it's going to deteriorate and, and rot a lot quicker than the sunbrella as well. Or the dust sir. Are you talking about upholstery or strictly? Strictly boat canvas. Strictly canvas. Now, they have, sunbrella does make upholstery fabrics. I don't know much about that because I don't do any upholstery. We don't, we primarily just do boat canvas. Right, right. So um, now you the sunbrella, the marine grade sunbrella, which there's only there's only one one marine grade sunbrella, and it's a nine and a quarter ounce fabric that is used for upholstery occasionally, especially if they're exterior type cushions, you know, outside. Um, but inside they do make a, a lighter weight. I think it's like a six ounce. It's just a softer um, Sunbrella interior fabric that they use. Same rules apply with, with either one of them. Now, um, if you, on that care and cleaning card from Sunbrella that I just gave you, one of the biggest questions that I get asked is how to clean it. Well, it's el elbow grease and non-harsh non detergents. You know, you don't, except for if you read that, it'll tell you that you can put bleach on it. If you're spot cleaning, you know, dilute it and clean it with bleach. Um, but you just have to rinse it real well and make sure that you keep your, um, the bleach off of the threads because the threads are what deteriorate if you uh, use the bleach on it. So, so the uh, vinegar and water is good. Yeah, sure. Okay. Anything that you use, you just want to make sure you rinse it back out. Once you get the stain off, 
once it's cleaned, rinse it out real, real well. And get anything that's still built into that fiber. It's just like washing clothes. I mean, is, if you get that out of there, it will. Uh, How about uh, clay, not lemon clay, but clay after you clean it to use it to protect On the glass? It. Yes. So, yeah, you know, that's, that's great. That you must be an old school guy because. I just heard a lot of it. <laughs> back in the day, I started making canvas in 1990. And um, I think that there were some products back then, but they weren't really publicized that much. The, uh, for clear Isinglass, we would tell everybody to get pledge and not lemon pledge because they use actual lemon and the lemon would deteriorate the threads. And all it's doing, all the pledge is doing is keeping the clear moisturized. Because if you notice, like on the back of uh, convertibles on cars, most of those glass, the, the glass is all yellow and you can't see out of the back of it. All that's doing is drying out. And because they use the harsh chemicals washing cars, that's what happens is that, that chem those chemicals dry that clear of the ising glass out. And that's what turns it yellow and makes it brittle and makes it crack. So technically, the, the, an ising glass can last just as long as canvas does if it's taken care of properly, meaning if it's, uh, if it's moisturized. You keep it moisturized so that it doesn't dry out. And really, as, as surveyors, if you guys are looking at boats and determining you know, it, you know, if that's a problem or not, it's pretty obvious to see hazing. Hazing, yellowing, drying, cracking, that's the glove. It's just not been taken care of. You know, because taken care of properly, it should last as long as the material lasts. It should last as long as the threads last. You know, the thread is the most vulnerable spot on canvas, to be honest with you. Until recently, they now have a uh, PTFE thread, which is, I, I use this word cautiously. Some people would call it a Kevlar type thread but it's not really a Kevlar, and I, I'm not gonna go into it because I don't know the details of it, but it is a lifetime thread. They say it's, it's a lifetime thread. It will take UV exposure 100% of the time for a lifetime. What's a lifetime? I think probably about 18 years. So 18 years is about the, the life expectancy if maintained properly with any of this stuff, any, any type of clear canvas, vinyl, <clears throat> acrylics. Um, so with, uh, with the, the Isinglass also, um, any, type, any type of um, acid or alcohol or, or uh, detergent-based products, like grease lightning, um, anything that's harsh like that will actually, again, dry out and burn the, the glass. When that burns, you can see spots in it where somebody has taken something and wiped it on there and left it on there and it simply just dried it out. Um, uh, suntan lotion is deathly for, uh, for uh, Isinglass. The spray suntan lotions that people put on all the time, that stuff will mist and it'll get on the clear and there again, that's exactly what it does is it just takes the moisture out of it and dries it and, and uh, deteriorates it. So uh, um, the back, let me back up to that, that thread. The thread that used to be common practice was a polyester nylon type mix. And they would have basically two different types. They would have a waxed or a coated and then a non-waxed or coated. The waxed threads they would consider to be anti-wick. What that means is on a bimini top, anytime you take a needle and you poke a hole and you shove a piece of thread in there, um, you're creating a leak. And the anti-wick thread would basically allow the water to penetrate through the hole, but it wouldn't wick down the thread. So it wouldn't follow and trace and then have find a spot to ultimately drip. That waxing or the coating, which I don't know that they actually intended this at the beginning, but what it would do was after the sun would beat it up for a little while, that coating would basically kind of melt and seal up the needle hole. So it worked out really good for us as fabricators because we could simply say, listen, if your boat's leaking right now after I just did it, in a couple of weeks from now, 
it will quit because it's going to seal those needle holes up. <clears throat> um, with the new PTFE threads or the Gore-Tex type threads, that doesn't happen again. So what we have to do is we have to wait for, this sounds odd, but the, and it's true, you have to wait for the dirt to clog the hole because otherwise it's going to leak. That's just the way it is. You're po especially if you're doing vinyl. You're poking a hole in a piece of vinyl and you're sticking a piece of thread in there, it doesn't magically seal. It's not gonna magically seal. So um, a new boater that doesn't have experience with marine canvas, and they spend five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 getting a new enclosure done on their boat, and the next day it comes out and it rains and it leaks, well, it just takes a little bit of calming to explain to them that, listen, it's going to quit leaking, but ultimately, you know, ultimately will quit. But it, right now, you know, it's what it is. You know, you poke a hole. So the other, you know, people also complain about zippers leaking. Well, it's a zipper. You know, they do make, they do make waterproof zippers, but they're not really marine grade type zippers. So we use the YKK. Let's talk about zippers for a second. Um, next to the thread going bad first, that the next problem was typically um, zippers going back. There are two types, there's two formulas for zippers that are used in the marine industry. One's a plastic and the other one's a nylon. Um, any type of, uh, well, nylon zippers are what you want to use. They have a better UV rating than a plastic does. And any type of nylon zipper is going to have a name brand. So a plastic zipper is typically a, a foreign type zipper that's you know, uh, made in high volume and very, very cheap and very inexpensive. They look, they look the same, but on the slider, the actual slider itself, it will say YKK, RiRi, um, uh, U, U Mark, I think it's U Mark, anyways, it will say on the slider what the name brand of the zipper is. And in the marine industry, if you don't see a name on the slider, you know that it's a cheap Chinese zipper. And it's going, to, uh, it's going to be plastic, and it's going to fall apart. There's different sizes of zippers. There's uh, fives, tens, fifteens, you know, threes. There's all kinds of different size zippers and slides. There's different types of slides that we use, locking slides, non-locking slides. But every one of them will say a name brand on it. So that's one way that you can tell if you're looking to, to get some value to an enclosure. If it doesn't have a name on that slider, it's a cheap zip. So, yes, sir. Uh, just a quick question about Ozzy Glass because we deal with it all the time. And love your approach. Um, typical example boat like that with multi panels and things like mm -hmm. that. When they come from the factory, they're stored in these nice little bags that are usually shoved in a closet. What's your feeling in long term storage of Ozzy Glass? It can't be, you can. You can't fold isinglass. You could roll it. If you have something like a tube that you roll it up on, you can roll it as long as it's clean and dry. You could roll it up on there, stick it in a bag, and put it into a compartment as long as it's not going to be um, compressed and ha have a fold. Because it does have a memory to it. So it will stay. Like if you took a penny and rolled it up tight on a penny, the impression of that pe penny, when you unroll it, it's going to last. It's going to be on there for a long, long time. Because it has that memory. But as far as long term storage in bags that come with these sea rays or name reports. Not a problem with that. As long as it's clean and dry mm -hmm. before you put it in there. Do you recommend putting like a sheet or a blanket between the two? Absolutely, because you're reducing the scratch. <clears throat> right. You know, so they so you know the difference between Ising glass and then the big name brands like the O'Sullivan's and the Strata glass. So let me give you a little bit of a schooling on, on what that the difference is. Um an Ising glass is just an extruded roll. Comes in a big roll, and there's nothing in between it. They just wrap it up, and typically it's 19, 20, 30 yard rolls of Ising glass. And it's typically um, just one thickness of whatever thickness it is, being it's a 10 millimeter, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, up to 80 mil thickness. Um, it's just one extrusion that comes out and then it gets put onto a roll. That is, uh, 
well, used a lot in the marine industry, but it was made more for um, just clear curtains, like on buildings and stuff like that. That it's not, it wasn't really a marine because there's not much UV resistancy in it, and there isn't the clarity. So that's why Stratoglass or O'Sullivan came out with a Preston polish. So they take, they would take um, two 20 mil pieces of pressed um, glass, put an anti-fog film in between it, sandwich it together, and then it gets heated and polished, pressed and polished. And that stuff comes in a sheet. And when you buy it, it comes with paper in between there so that it, you know, there's also a scratch resistant coating that they put on there. So I'm not an expert on how they manufacture this stuff. I'm just telling you what, what, you know, <clears throat> what we go through. But, um, but the, I, the, the Strataglass NOC with the anti scratch resistant coating on there will definitely last a lot longer when you're rolling up and down you'll you'll notice a big difference um, with the quality and the, the prices <clears throat> the price difference is considerable too so you know a lot of the smaller canvas shops that can't really afford to stock those type of products will use a standard ising glass and you know price it as a full enclosure or a regular enclosure that you know it, that's a that's another topic I guess but <clears throat> um, so any questions about the Isinglass? No, no. <laughs> All right. Actually, let's take, uh, let's take that boat for an example. <clears throat> So are, how, how interested are you in understanding pricing? I am. You could do a lot of yeah. for insurance For insurance purposes, you know, for, you know, you guys, you guys are the front runners, man. You guys are the guys, you know, I seek out surveyors for my business because I get like Randy, I, mean, I get, I get work from surveyors. That's how, that's how we get business. Um, but it was, would be really good for you guys to understand how the pricing works so that you could do your own estimating on the spot and on the job. There's a couple things that I think that you guys could do. Um, one is if you understood the pricing, you could, you could figure it out, get yourself a baseline and actually subcontract out the canvas work and make some money. By, by selling, I mean, you guys are seeing every boat that's being sold almost. Any boat that's having a survey done before it's being sold, bought or sold, um, you guys have a hell of an opportunity to make some money. Um, just because in, in the marine industry, as you know, it, everything's based on, on commission. You know, if we have a boat dealer that sells a boat, we give them a commission, Camp Sky does. Um, same thing with you know, any type of yacht broker or anything. We give commissions. So we're, the canvas companies are accustomed to giving commissions, especially to anybody that's going to give them, you know, multiple jobs. So <clears throat> you can also keep your canvas guy in check, too, if you understand the pricing. So um, if you want to write this stuff down, these are, these are really good. These are really good. Um, this is a really good just base on, on how to, how to, Come up with just a number, and a number that you could judge and value. You know, if somebody says that the enclosure is forty thousand dollars, and you figured it out fifteen thousand, you know, there's something wrong with that picture, right? And, and to be able to understand it, so um, it doesn't happen a lot, but a lot of times with storms, especially snow damage, you'll damage frames. So with a frame. Um, you typically have on any boat that's going to be over 30, 35 foot, you're going to have a one inch stainless steel frame. And if you have to replace that frame, typically what we get is $100 per bow. 
So if it's three bows, it's 300 bucks. And then we have another, we add another $100 to it for fittings. So the frame retail, all these prices that I'm gonna give you are, are gonna be a retail price. Um, retail price for a frame, a three bow frame with stainless steel fittings, it's gonna be $100 per bow and then $100 for the fittings. Now, if it's an aluminum frame, it's about $100 a bow versus the two. Actually, am I saying, did I say that wrong? Maybe, I think I was looking, $200 per bow, my bad. I did say it wrong. I was looking at the other one. <laughs> for stainless steel, it's $200 per bow. And then $100 for fittings. For aluminum, it's $100 per bow. And $100 for fittings. Because you usually use a stainless steel fitting even if you're using the aluminum tubing. Um, freshwater boats a lot of times will cut back and use the stainless or the, the aluminum anodized aluminum versus stainless steel. And that's for all fittings on that boat. Yeah, yeah. It's um, you know, fittings range from eight, eight, eight to fifteen bucks per fitting. You know, so we just do it throw a standard at it and say, you know, it's it's a hundred hundred bucks for for fittings because typically that's about what it costs about a hundred bucks for a set of fittings for a bimini top. Um, now on the bimini top canvas, if you're putting an enclosure on it and it's getting all the zippers, which means the the pockets are zipped, taken on and off, and you also have all the zippers for all the curtains on there, um, we go with twenty dollars a square foot for bimini tops. And that is going, that's the same pricing if it's a freestanding bimini top or it connects to a radar arch. So you just take the, the square footage of it, multiply it by 20 bucks, that'll give you the canvas, and then you add your frame to it if you need to build a frame. Well, is, that a, is that a mid grade canvas or something? No, that's Sunbrel. That's Sunbrel. Yeah. So now, you know, when. <clears throat> you say mid grade or high grade low grade think about it that boat right there that has 10 yards of fabric maybe 10 yards if you're buying $10 a yard fabric or $30 a yard fabric you're not talking about that much money but you're talking about a hell of a difference in quality from a $10 fabric to a to a $30 fabric um, so the bottom line is, with, with, we, don't, we don't ever buy a cheap fabric, ever. I always buy a name brand, marine grade, you know, high-end type fabric, because it's not that much material. Now, awnings, you know, something like that where you're using hundreds and hundreds of yards can make a big difference, on, but on one single boat, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. Yeah, the only reason I ask that is because if you're doing, if you're doing estimates for an insurance company, mm -hmm. and you're talking about a high line boat, a higher line boat, yep. or a baseline boat, the materials are going to be different if you've got a loss of the canvas. So, I mean, if, you know, if, you, if you're looking at, if you're looking at a, replacing your original top that was made with baseline material, mm -hmm. and cheap plastic zippers and aluminum bows, you know, it should be replaced, you know, in kind. Yeah. They're, they're, not, they're not going to step up. The insurance company is not going to want to pay the extra money. That's the reason I asked that. In my experience, in my experience, and I've literally done hundreds and hundreds of insurance claims, um, the insurance companies ask for two things, materials and labor. Cost of materials, cost of labor. There again, so in that, and this is where I'm trying to explain it. If you have $400, if it's a 10, uh, let me back, let me scale it down. If it's a $5,000 enclosure, something about like that, it's a $5,000 enclosure. If you have $400 in material in cheap stuff or $650 in material in expensive stuff, it's not the big deal because you have 70% of it is going to be labor anyways. So the, the main part of it is, uh, of, of canvas is going to be labor. So, <clears throat> and beyond, and the other thing, I don't know what the cheap fabrics cost because we don't buy them. So I guess I don't really have a, a good answer for that. So, 
Um, okay, so we got the bimini top at, at 20 bucks a square foot. Now, curtains, just like this. Um, Isinglass curtains with a canvas border around it that's either zip top and bottom or zip top and snap bottom. Um, those curtains, we estimate those to be at $35. This is for just a standard um, Isinglass. Okay, so even a strata glass, icing glass, not the hard acrylic stuff, typically a 30 or a 40 mil um, icing glass. We go $35 a square foot. Now you know how to do that. What you do is you take and you measure it in inches. You measure the highest point in inches and the medium, if it's a angled curtain like this, you take the, the medium width, the highest height, in inches, add the inches together, divided by 144 gives you the square footage, right? So let, let, let's, for example, say that this is 30 by 60. So you have uh, 30 inches times 60 inches is 1800 divided by 144 gives you 12.5 square feet. So 12.5 times 35, you're looking at $437 curtain which that's about right. That's about exactly right. And if you were lazy about it, you could take that 430 bucks and multiply it by four because that's about how many curtains are right there, right? Um, we do on, when I'm doing estimating on boats, that's, that's exactly what I do, is I find the medium height on it and then I find the medium width. Find the inches square, convert it into square feet, multiply it by 35 bucks, Shoot the price. Um, now with the acrylic stuff. Now you oh you know what? Yeah, does that include zippers and everything? yeah, that's that's everything. the the clear, the snap, the zipper, the the patterning, the installation. Ready every, to go. Yep, that's on the boat. That's yep on the boat. Um, one thing that we didn't discuss, probably because I don't do much of it in my shop, is macrolon with the clear. Anybody familiar with macrolon? Heard that word before, that term? It's polycarbonate. It's not acrylic. Um, it looks and it feels like an acrylic when it's brand new. But there again, I can't go into the, I can't really explain to you the difference between a polycarbonate and an acrylic. But I can tell you this. A polycarbonate is a five-year product. An acrylic is an 18-year product. That's the difference. In it. The polycarbonate can be sewn. It's, a, it's soft, so if you have a, a diamond point type needle where that fake stitch line that I was showing you about because we glue the canvas to the clear on the acrylic, um, the polycarbonate is actually sewn. So they punch through there. Problem is when you punch a hole through that, uh, that polycarbonate, you get just a little bit of a fray. And over time, that stuff will shoot completely through and it will haze and again, yellow and deteriorate polycarbonates. So when I talk about rigid enclosures, I'm never referring to a polycarbonate. I think the product is bad. The that macro will, that will crack easier too, correct? Yeah, yes. Typically it's gonna be at 60 mil, the polycarbonate. Heavier. No, 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 lighter, because lighter. the acrylic is an 80 mil. Okay. Right, <clears throat> right, big difference. So um, that being said, the acrylic curtains that we figure out, we price those anywhere between 50 and $55 a square foot. You're gonna see, you're gonna see the acrylics, you're gonna see the acrylics on the, the big stuff, the, the sport fish. That's where you're gonna see the acrylics. Um, any type of, you know, hard top type sport fish boat, where the, there's, you know, big curtains, rounded off curtains, and some of the big cruising style type boats. The stuff that isn't coming on and off a lot, it's only getting flipped up and down, you're, that's where you're gonna see the acrylics. Now on the smaller boat stuff, like this, you're gonna see a rigid enclosure, but 90% of the time, it's gonna be the macrolon, okay, or the polycarbonate. That polycarbonate would be priced pretty much the same as what you would with uh, the strata glass or the isinglass. <clears throat> $35 a boat. It, yes, yes. 
Do you say it was a polycarbonate or what? The name, the biggest name brand of the polycarbonate clears is called Macrolon. Question from Jay. Yes, sir. So we're looking at this Monterey, whatever it is. And my simple math says that it's about $5,500 worth of material. On that boat? On that boat. You're not going to have $5,500 $5, in material. Okay, I'm not in total. Oh, and the no. sale, the, yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah, that little boat right there, that little boat right there is going to bring my shop somewhere between five and six thousand okay, dollars. Yep. Okay. Yep. So why would you use Macalot to last five years? Because it's eleven hundred dollars a year in depreciation. Yep. <coughs> yeah. Good. I don't know why people do it. That's a good question. That's a that's a very good question, and that's exactly why we don't use it in our shop. So. Um, Oh, Randy, you said it's $1,100 per year for depreciation on canvas? If, if it's a five-year product, mm -hmm. then it's $5,500, it's $1,100 a year. That's okay, true. Gotcha. Right, right. right. Okay, gotcha. So now keep, keep in mind now, when, I, when we're talking about longevity or depreciation, what I, I'm, I'm saying, if I build it and I put it on your boat, and you don't ever clean it or touch it or moisturize it or protect it or do anything like that. If it just sits there, 100% exposure, that's about what you're going to get out of it. Taken care of properly, you're going to get a lot more life out of it. Any of it taken care of properly, you're going to get a lot more life out of it. <clears throat> now, you're probably going to get the, what's your, the hourly rate. So that's going to be labor rate that you have to go. Labor rate. Okay. Um, let's go. Th let's go through that in a minute. Let's finish up with these pricing, yep. and then we'll talk about the labor rates. Right. right? Um, the next thing is going to be uh, just canvas curtains. So if, if this on the back of this didn't have any glass in it at all, it was just an uh, aft curtain, right? Canvas aft curtain. Typically, what we go with is about fifteen bucks a square foot for those. So anything <clears throat> front glass. Front windshield covers that are just canvas, 15 bucks a square foot. Uh, uh, what else? Dinghy covers, you know, anything that's just a canvas cover that's going to take some labor to do where it's not just a flat piece. You know, you've got some darts in it, you know, you've got a little bit of labor, you've got some, some reinforcing and some binding going around the outside edge of it. You can, you can roughly figure that that's going to be about 15 bucks a square foot. So standard flat, flat work, we call it, where there's, it's just a rectangle piece of canvas. It's just a flat piece of canvas, eight to 10 bucks a square foot for just a standard, you know, nothing that's got a lot of custom or a lot of labor building it. Oh, but, the first eight? Yeah, something that's custom with just canvas, 15 bucks, eight to 10 if it's just flat work. Seat cushion covers. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but uh, to make a seat cushion cover is damn near as much labor as making the seat cushion itself. It's just a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of patterning. You have to make every individual piece, and you have to, you know, put all the reference marks on it so you can get everything to line up so it goes on there. Um, we'll go, we'll go, you know, eighteen to twenty bucks on real custom, just canvas type stuff, like seat cover cushions, seat cushion covers. <clears throat> okay, so um, replacing clear. This is a big one. This gets done a lot, a lot, a lot. When you have somebody that didn't take care of the clear and it's hazed, yellowed, cut, broke, cracked, but the canvas border around the outside of it is still pretty good shape. Um, we will go for Ising glass, it's about $20 a square foot to replace just the clear. Um, on the acrylic, it's about $35 a square foot. And what we what that does, <clears throat> now depending on how 
the manufacturer has made this to begin with. If on my example there, the, the clear is sandwiched in between the canvas, um, that's where the 20 bucks a square foot, because you actually have to cut that off and you have to pick out all the threads. You have to make the new piece of clear, stick it back in there and try to hit the same needle holes as you sew it back together. Nope. Um, some people, when they manufacture that, they will take a blank piece of canvas, put a piece of clear on it, cut out the shape, bind it, put the zippers on it, and then cut the outside of the canvas around and do what we call just make a picture frame of canvas around a piece of clear. Well, if you're replacing that piece of clear, it's pretty simple. All you're doing is taking a piece of clear, sticking it on the inside of it, stitching it down, and then cutting the old stuff off and throwing it away. So your labor rate can reduce on that, you know, because it's just a lot easier, a lot less time to do those. Okay, that's pretty much, I don't know that there's much more than that. You know, standard canvas covers, clear curtains, acrylic curtains, bimini tops, you know, there's not a lot more so to it. curtains with zipper, uh, with uh, screens and stuff in um, the What we do is we'll figure it at the flat canvas rate, uh -huh. and then I put on, if it's a, if it's a, uh, uh, screen clear zip you know in or out zip um, we price it by the window so the window would be that window would be 150 bucks for a clear end screen if you're if you're doing just a back window on a piece of uh, like on a back curtain just an aft drop curtain or you're putting a window in you know that could be 75 to 100 dollars just for a piece of clear to get sewn in there so clear and screen within the flat, hundred fifty bucks, fifty hundred dollars per window. Window, right? Um, when you talk labor rate, what you're mostly referring to in a canvas shop is restitching. That's typically when you're going to have somebody bill you by the hour, and in our area, right here in in Maryland. Um, the, the marine industry's average labor rate is 108, 110, 112 bucks an hour. Mechanics, fiberglass guys, you know, most of those guys are somewhere in the just over a hundred buck neighborhood. <clears throat> in a canvas shop, you're going to be looking at more like $200 an hour. $200 an hour. Simple, simple reason is. If I do a restitch, you brought me that side curtain right there and asked me to re-sew it, it's going to take me about four minutes to do it. What's my four minutes worth? Well, I say that my four minutes is worth a minimum of 50 bucks because you brought it in my shop. I can't really give you an hourly rate, and I would certainly be, be um, hurting myself by saying, you know, if you brought me... 10 panels that needed to be re-sewn, and I gave you an honest $110 an hour rate, I would have it all done for in an hour for 110 bucks. But I think that my time's worth a lot more than that. So we don't ever, we don't, my shop, we don't bid anything by the hour. We bid it by the job. You know, I say a restitch, a restitch is worth 50 bucks. You bring me a bimini top that's unserviceable and it costs you $500 to buy a new one. If it was 75 or 100 bucks to get it re sewn, it's well worth it to you, in my opinion, even though it only takes me five or 10 minutes to do it. So, kind of like going, you know, saying, you know, how much, how much is a, you know, how much labor is in making a bottle of Coke? You know, you're not buying that. What you're buying is the bottle of Coke. So it's 200 bucks an hour labor, we say. Now, how do you labor out that bimmy, that whole enclosure? How many hours? So that's a tough doing, one. Doing an estimate, I mean, you gave us the materials. No, no, no. This is all of those prices that I just gave you include labor. Include labor. Oh, very nice. Yeah, okay. because so 
you, Randy explained to you, I have a school, right? I, I teach students. I have students that come from, from all over the world that come in and they go through the school. There is absolutely no way that I could say you could charge $30 an hour, $100 an hour, and be even or equal to you and you. Right. Because your work ethics are not going to be the same. Right. Your shop layout's not going to be the same. Your productivity is not going to be the same. Who knows how long you're going to be on your iPhone in that hour? Right. I mean, there's just no way. So what we figure it is on the job and done. On the job and done. So that the price you gave us includes labor and materials. That's install. Install ready to go. Yep, install on the boat. It's actually a much better way to get it done. For everybody. for everybody and that's and you know what else that does is it gives it a standard so if you are a, a new customer that just came into a marina you don't know anybody right and you come in and ask me to build you an enclosure a year later you make friends with all these guys and you find out that you just got priced a thousand dollars more than Jim did because I don't know you you know which happens on a daily basis it's just it's wrong business practice so putting a standard onto it does standardize it. And it also gives me some ammunition when I standardize it to say, when it, there's a price discrepancy, you know, Jim said his was $2,500 and you charged me $3,500. I could simply say, well, look, you've got, you've got eight pieces. He's got four. You know, so that's, you know, that's the difference. You know, same size, different pieces. So, so there, <clears throat> With that knowledge, um, you, can, you can actually do a little bit more study. Um, there's, there's Performance Textiles is right in Annapolis, and they have a standard price for all of these materials. You can do some, you can do some, uh, some research, find out exactly what these, these boats would cost and materials, and then kind of break down an hourly rate type thing, you know, if you wanted to, and figure out, you know, that enclosure right there, if it took a week, so 40 hours, you know, if it's $200 an hour, you know, you've got $650 of materials in it, I'm figuring that, you know, there's at least three or $400 of profit if I was to give this to a canvas shop. So you would have some knowledge going in and say, John, can you make this enclosure for 4,200 bucks? I look at it and say, well, you know, yeah, I can make it for 4,200 bucks because you're going to give me another one next week and another one in a month from now. And you know, if you continue to give me more work, you can, you could add on the four or five, 600 bucks and, you know, make some money doing that on the side, doing your same job that you do every day. So is that, is anybody, is it, are you all self-employed? Yes. Everybody's self-employed? So, but we have ethics. I was just getting ready to say that. We have that, could, that, that could be uh, it could, See, I don't know. I don't know. This is the first time that I've ever, this is a different genre than what I usually talk to people. Right. Okay. If we're self-employed, so, we do have Sam's ethics, and that could be construed as maybe collusion. Could it? Could it? Could especially it? Especially conflict, of interest. conflict of interest, for sure. Yeah, you want insurance estimated? Okay. Yeah. For the company, and then take it a kickback. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a conflict, of conflict of interest. Yeah. So we could not do that. Okay. Okay. Sir. I'm like, that doesn't mean we can't suggest to come to. No, to we can refer. No, we're not just anybody for doing this. Right. No, but see, so yeah, as an ethical surveyor, though, you could, you could legitimately go to your client and say, this should be 4500 bucks. If you're getting, if you're looking, at, if somebody's looking at charging you eight thousand dollars, well, we can make sure they're they're guided in the right direction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we can't do what you're saying is, you know, charge the customer five grand, and then take the profit. We can't do that. That's okay. That's conflict okay. Of okay. Okay. But we can refer to anybody, and we have all of us have particular canvas people that we refer people to. Right. Yeah. We don't get any kickbacks from it. It's just because it's a common courtesy that that's that canvas guy, you, we refer business to, you're going to refer business to us. 
Yeah. Sure. It's a, it's a sure. big yeah. it's a big win 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 situation all around. So that's how we get our benefit. Right. Yeah, but that doing it that way is not ethical. Okay. That okay. Is Fair enough. Fair enough. Conflict of interest. So you can see me. I want to make money on everybody. <laughs> That's a good scenario. So if, you're, if, you're, if you're working in the industry for a, a laborer, you know, you're a supplier of a, a service. That's one thing. But we're actually we're supplying a service, but we're all actually supposed to be ethically neutral. Right. Okay. Well, then how about this? Would you say, on average per week, you have ten extra hours free time, downtime? Uh, uh, could, uh, could do something else time okay. yes or no no maybe well if the and you could come to my school learn how to make canvas and if you have a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood that you could put somewhere in a room in a garage and somewhere you guys you would make more money than most canvas companies, because of who you already are, being surveyors, if you had the ability to put a sewing machine and a four by eight sheet of plywood in your garage and do your own canvas work. Well, that, you're, finding, you're, you're going on a fine line there, too. Really? Is that true? Is that right? Because we cannot do work See, uh, yeah, on I, boats that we survey. Is that right? I didn't it's know right. that. Okay. Well, I mean, just like not, can, not by, glass not by our food, by you can. Sam's, you can, but you can it's not, not a good. It's not a good practice. Not a good practice. practice. A mechanic and a surveyor. Right? Well, you can't if if you survey a boat, and you come back and say, "Hey, you need all these items fixed, and I can fix them for you for this price." That's unethical. Got it. You can't do that. Agreed. Yeah, and it's unethical. You cannot do that. Yeah. So therefore, what you're saying now, if I make a canvas for my buddy for his boat, that's one thing. Right. Okay. But since I've sur I cannot survey that boat, just like a fiberglass guy. Okay. He can't fix a boat and then come back a year later and service and survey that boat because he's done work on that boat. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's. Okay. It's all, it's a conflict of interest, collusion, ethical yep. scenario. Not only that, it would be very difficult to defend it if you ended up in court. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's good point. point. I so guess. we got to look yeah. at all those aspects of mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in that case, we're going to refer business to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's, so, that's the end of the story on that. Yeah. But, that's cool because this now gives us a lot of good information for estimating damage. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and I'm assuming that you all are local. Most of us, yes. Yeah, I'll give you all a business card. You know, if you want, if you have something that's stubborn, you can call me for pricing. I don't have a problem with that. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't take me two or three minutes to figure out the job, you know, or give you a good average of what it should be. So and I'll give you my. And you're in Annapolis, you're in uh, Bay Bridge? I, Bay Bridge. Bay Bridge, okay. yeah. You know, what you said and what you offered, that doesn't make what you did, that doesn't make you wrong. No. Because that's done in the industry all the time. You can offer that to a marina, you know, send me all your business. Oh, yeah. So you do yep. that. That's how, you, that's how you garner your business. Uh, offering, it, offering it to us just doesn't work at that level. Right. But as far as referring work. You know, well, you know, actually, now that, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I have never given a survey of a kickback, ever. Yeah, that's why. You know, yeah, yeah. and I guess like, yeah, makes sense. You, you, we refer business to you, you refer business to that. Yeah. That's what we do. Very good. Well, the other part of my presentation is shot and win. <laughs> so, um, you want to do? So you want to go into detail a little bit more on on price? You want to pick out another boat and go through the pricing and, see, and figure out, or or, or no? Or sure. yeah, I mean, if we shot your other part of your presentation, you sit there. Well, we've got um, something else. Because I'm sure you're going to go on profit, how to make more money, and stuff like that, right? 
Uh, uh. <coughs> Plus, I know if I did other stuff, my wife would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's wrong with this thing? What are you trying to do? Yeah, how do you literally go skyrocket? There we go. There we go. All right, here's a pretty good, here's a pretty common boat, older boat. $6,500. Little high, oh, a little high on that. So, um, let's, say, let's say this afternoon right here is 12 foot by 18 foot. Two hundred sixteen square feet. Two hundred sixteen feet times fifteen bucks. It's thirty two forty. Would you would you try to buy fifteen bucks? You've got a, uh, actually this is, this is more of a convertible top because that's, that's actually canvas on this thing. But let's say that the front is clear. So this is just the little top that you've got right there. And let's say that this is uh, three foot by 10 foot, right? Three foot by nine foot maybe. It's probably three by nine. That's a 20 foot, right? Uh, uh, Bimini, yeah, 20. 540 bucks. <clears throat> uh, let's see, you got four, eight, eight, eight. So you have 16 feet, the front, the front panels, 16 feet by, let's say, 35 inches. So 16 times 12 is 30, 16 times 12. Is 192, 190, 192 times 36 inches is 6,900 square inches divided by 144 gives us 48 square feet. 48 times 30, 48 times 35 is 1680 for clear. And then <clears throat> That back window right there, solid piece of clear. Um, no zippers, no anything. It's going to be like 150 bucks for that piece. So you've got 32, 40 plus 5, 40 plus 16, 80 plus 150 bucks. So 50, 600 bucks. So, <clears throat> okay, and now here's where you got to do the judgment. You know, it's a, that's. So the 1980s boat looks like to me. It's a 99. 99. Yeah, it does look old. It looks like it's got those weird old lines. And anyways, 56. I said 5600 bucks. 5600 bucks is a little bit high. That, that stems a little bit high for that boat. You know, for that style, that boat, that 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 oldness. Um, I would I would lean more towards the five five thousand dollar neighborhood. So and what I'm doing right now is is 28 years of judgment. You know that's not something that can be taught. So what what those prices are going to do is it's going to give you a foundation, not an exact price. And and honestly, the prices that I just quoted you are probably some of the highest in the entire country. We get more for canvas work right here than anybody else does. I've got cam I own canvas shops in Florida and they don't get near they get probably about 70% what we get here in Florida. 
Why, why isn't that? Um, without being too rude, different, different classification of people. People here are richer. Just the way it is. Yep. There's more money here than there is down there. And that's just the way it is. Not to mention in the marine industry, everybody, everybody that's in the marine industry wants to live in Florida. So the competition is really high. There's a canvas shop on every corner. There's a mechanic, there's a fiberglass guy, there's an upholstery guy, there's a marine surveyor on every block in Florida. So that's why we can specialize it more here. So, so that being said, you know, unless you want to become a canvas guy, <laughs> I have nothing more for you. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about your school. School. So what we do is I have a jig at the, at the shop. And the reason for the jig and not working on a boat is so that it's down low and it's accessible and we're not trying to swing off the stuff to do it. So you can actually get the real foundation of, of how to put the marks. Um, this, this boat right here, you see all that wrinkling in that layer right there? Um, not acceptable in our shop, not acceptable. Matter of fact, if that was done, and this is where I, if, if, that, if that boat was built by you as an employee of mine on the third time, and it looked like that, I would fire you. Um, we specialize in making everything fit, which means tensioning. So we, we do a lot of zipper tensioning and, uh, and workmanship is what we, we specialize in. I have most of my clients that come in to the shop are existing canvas guys. What they're doing is they want to come in and they want to learn how to do it right. So, and you know, I'll, I'll just be real, you know, humble about that. I mean, we, we make good canvas work and everybody knows it. And, and I have a lot of experience. I've done OEM work. I've done manufacturer work. I've done, you know, a lot because of course retail customers, but, um, that's what we specialize in is teaching people how to do it right and <clears throat> do every aspect of it. Um, frame making the geometry and the math of frame making so that you can make uh, sailboat dodger frames that fit underneath the boom up against the backstay and not hitting, you know, whatever so that you can do it once in the shop, take it to the boat. And when you put it on, it's going to be the right geometry to fit on there. So we, we go through extensively uh, the demi top and the frame making, and then we go into the curtains and the usips and what you know it's it's a pretty simple philosophy that we have. Um, if you take a piece of fabric, being clear canvas, vinyl, whatever it is, and you unroll it off of a roll or take it out of a sheet or whatever, and you put it on the table and it's flat, and then you do something to it and it's not flat anymore, it's that's done wrong. If you do something to it and it's still flat, you go to the next step. You do something else to it, it's still flat. When you're completely done with it and it's flat on the table, when you put it on the boat, it's gonna be flat, right? If you put it on the boat and it's not flat, it goes all the way back to when you did the pattern to begin with. So it doesn't fit. So that's what we do is I teach you how to do the steps of building it. And there's a lot to it. There's a lot, a lot of tensioning that we do. You have to know um, for example, on the bimini top frame, where the flex is going to happen. And the flex, not only in just the frame itself, but the stretch and the weave of the fabric. You know, there's a, and I, I always forget these names, warp, warp and wrath, wrath and warp, something like that. Warp and weave. Warp and weave. Yeah, anyways. So we have, we position the materials on the boat the right way so that you're taking the stretch out of it and not letting the curtains do it, take the stretch out of it. So there, we, we train in that. And then I go into a little bit more detail, but pricing and then also um, business, you know, how, how, to, how to do business. A lot of people can make canvas, not a lot of people can do the business. So I teach people how to, you know, <clears throat> sir. So how long is school, what kind of classes? And it's what we do is we only take four students once a month for four days. It's Tuesday through Friday. It's a four day school. 
And um, by the end of it, you will have made a full enclosure. Is that here in, is that in Annapolis? Or? Yeah, it's in Annapolis. Right. And so how much would I pay for my wife to go to that school? 1800 bucks. It's $1,800 for a four day class. And, uh, but the, we have a little bit of, you need to be able to sew before you come to me. If you can sew, and I don't care what you know how to sew, as long as you can use and operate a sewing machine without me you know, helping you, um, you can learn this business. So when you, you, you say you make them really tight, how do you uh, account for I don't, I don't, and that's just, a, you don't. You make it right to begin with, and then you explain to the people that they need to take care of their stuff. If you put, if you put a piece of Isinglass glass on a boat, you're going to have expansion and contraction. Just, it is. If it's super hot out, it's going to be loose. If it's super cold out, you might not get it on. So, and you guys have all, you guys have all oh, yeah. dealt with that. Yeah, most of the time you're dealing with Yeah. So my theory, my theory is, is make it right and fit exactly right in a climate controlled environment. And the extremes are what they are, are what they are. You know, there's, I don't know, maybe you've, maybe this is coming from something you've heard before, but I've heard canvas guys try to say that they want to age clear before they put it on, kind of like cheese, doesn't work. I've done it. I've taken rolls of clear and I put it up on roofs and let them sit up there for a year before I pulled it down and used it. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference, you know, cause it's a, it lets it expand and contract, you know, with the whole climate of the season. And then, you know, it's supposed to, well, some people would say it's supposed to acclimate it before you build it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, let me do this real quick. Yeah. 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 You just have the one location here in Maryland? Yeah, and we have a place in a, a, a custom shop in Jacksonville. Okay. <laughs> so this is the website this will give you so when you the school also <clears throat> we have I have a, an annual subscription which means you just pay for a year it's 49 bucks monthly subscription is 83 bucks but you can cancel at any time um, we have over 40 courses on the website so these are uh, if you go to the courses So you can see here's a here's a 45 foot custom Carolina. This would be just an intro video right there, and then you could come down and these are the modules. Um, so, uh, you know what? Actually, I've got a lot. You know what? Let me log in real quick so I can show you. Where the hell? I don't even know how to use my own website. Where the hell do you log in? Oh, member login right there. We're shift on this thing. This is a weird. It's English, that's fine. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it's an English. I need a capital. I need ah, a capitals. Right here? Caps lock. Oh, okay. You guys drive on the right side of the street, too, don't you? I don't think so. <laughs> Left, I think. Is that like right is in starboard or right is in direct? <laughs> you in? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, these are the enclosure courses. These are just your bimini top courses with the frame patterning. Um, so everything that we teach in the school 
is a reference on online. You can go through, you know, the mooring covers, some sailboat stuff, most miscellaneous stuff. This is a uh, this is a scribe tool that I invented. Um, this this tool. Uh, me doing gibberish somewhere in here that okay um, so <clears throat> I invented a uh, a patterning tool that's what it is in order in order to make this radius on that piece of clear. What we do when I, this will make a little bit more sense. When I pattern a boat, oh, that's great now. All right, when I pattern a boat, we pattern it with plastic. We actually uh, either pin, clamp, tape, whatever, plastic up on the boat, and we take a template. Once we take that template, then we figure out the shape of the clear, and we have, we draw in what we call a cut line for cutting out our clear. And then the clear becomes our template for making all of the canvas components that go around. So we'll, we'll put the clear down and take a pencil and trace that edge that we just marked out. Well, then we have to we have to mark in for a seam allowance and out for the amount of fabric that we want on there. So that scribe tool is unique in the fact that it will measure inside and outside all at the same time. And then and it also it also works as a uh, uh, probe, you know, so that you can trace whatever shape that you've got. Um, <clears throat> Gosh, this might be. So that's you can see that that's the inside of the shop. That's the plastic pieces that we, we go to the boat, figure out what we need rough, roughly, and then we come to the boat. And however you've got to get it on there, this is, we get the, the pattern on there. Then we bring it back into the shop and uh, we do what we call work the pattern. We draw it all out. We put, we put where the zippers are going to start, where they're going to stop, how they're going to be tensioned, where the snaps are going to go. And right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using a different colored Sharpie marker. I'm using a red Sharpie marker and I'm uh, measuring in where I actually want to cut my clear out on there. So it almost becomes, we actually, we actually draw the, the curtain completely out before we even start. And that's what we can use as a reference as we, as we continue to build the curtain itself. And then there's different methods for cutting the clear out. Um, this happens to be acrylic. Um, in my hand there, that's called a Fletcher tool or a plastic cutting tool. They're readily available at hardware stores, but it's just an etcher, right? And we, we just etch the acrylic <coughs> right on our cut line. So you can see that this here is our finish line of what our panel is actually going to be. And then the red line on the interior side of that is our cut clear. So that's strata glass. You can see it's being cut with scissors. 
So you can see this teardrop right here. That's where the arch comes down and the sides come down. You got that snap line. Then you need to have that built up there so that you're covering up so you're keeping the water out. So it's very important because so we'll on on hardtop type boats, especially like sea rays or cruisers, where they have the hardtop that comes around, we'll actually build a canvas balance that has the zipper on there. We call that the zipper tail. So with we're eliminating a step of patterning because we're able to build the zipper tail and the curtain all at one time with one, with one pattern. Kind of unique in our industry because a lot of people will do it twice and we save ourselves a bunch of time that way. Um, <clears throat> and in these videos, it goes through, it's a lot of, a lot of detail on, wh on what I'm doing in order to keep the panel nice and flat. So like this building, this zipper, you're taking, see how puckered this zipper is up there? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to understand that you're going to, you can never stretch anything on canvas. You have to lay it down so it lays nice and flat and then it always gets puckered up. And if you pucker something up, then it will uh, eliminate the stretching so that you're stretching wrinkles into it. Same thing with sewing. Um, you know, if you, if you sew something and you're comfortable with the fact that you're not missing anything, but when you're done sewing and it's wrinkled up, you have a problem with your sewing machine. So you have to address that. And we do some of that too in the school too, is, you know, tensioning on zipper threads and that type of thing. So wrinkles are not good. Wrinkles are not good because wrinkles make it not fit. And if it doesn't fit, it's going to flop around. If you have something that's too tight and it's putting a lot of tension on threads, it's going to do one thing, one of two things. It's going to rip the curtain or it's going to um, rip out the threads, right? Uh, just goes more into sewing. So, and then this is, this is putting on component pieces. So one of the things too, one of the hard things about, uh, making canvas is making two you, you take a piece of fabric and a piece of fabric and you put them together down here at the bottom how do you make them identical you know if you folded this over a 16th inch different than this is the 16 and then you applied it on 16th inch different and then the bottom edge is cut a 16th of an inch those 16 add up next thing you know you're three eighths of an inch out right so you so what I do is I show you I show you ways to make one component Duplicate the other side, but leave the leave it extended so that when you assemble it, you the, the your last step is to cut it off to make it to make it even on there. So this is a good example. You can see all of this rough rough canvas on the back side. That's all going to be junk thrown away in the end. And now I'm taping that on. Watch me pick tape off of a piece of canvas. It's great. More of the same. So one thing that um, all of these videos, which I've got hundreds of hundreds of freaking hours on it, um, is it's every single step. So if, if you actually owned that boat, if you actually owned that boat, you could buy that video and make that enclosure on your own. That's all I've got. Okay. Perfect timing. Who would you recommend though around here for holding Um there uh, there is a lady named uh Christine Romney. She is with uh